Oh, right, right, right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Salt Mines, where we study the depraved and demented failings of the human ego when people lose video games. In the top right side, we've got Fura. Furor. I. It could be like like rage, like Fuhrer, like you know. I'm thinking it's like that, not the Nazi, you know, not Hitler. I'm it's just the first time I said it, it sounded like. The other one, and I'm, I don't know who sent this replay in. <laughs> Let's just hope there's not too many SIGs and, and, and other, other, other things coming out. We'll see, we'll see. The fighter in the top left of Terran player. Terran's known for being salty. Um, but uh, lately, I would say Protoss players, with them not really having many champions doing that well in the big tournaments, are probably even more at wit's end, uh, getting a bit upset about the state of... Their, their favorite players getting their butts kicked in tournaments the last few years, and fair enough. And fair enough. Um, double gas opening for Terran. Uh, I'm just excited to be back casting Salt Mines. I had a quick trip to America, guys. Uh, before that, we had Katowice over in Poland, so I've been a bit lighter on the content on this channel, but it's good to be back and, um, and, and kind of commentating games with you all. So thanks for the patience and sticking with me. I do find that generally in these shows, we see people... Uh, fall apart a little bit and, and, and kind of, you know, just break down. And I feel like the funny secret to not being such a crazy person online is actually to be able to have those insane thoughts pop into your head. This guy's freaking idiot. He's playing the easy race. And to kind of go, yes, that's the thought that's in my head. Uh, I don't necessarily... That's not necessarily true. You know, like, like you guys know that like whole... You know, when you try and get, if any of you try any mindfulness or anything, you're like, oh, every thought that pops into my head doesn't necessarily represent reality, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I feel like that's probably one of the most instrumental things when it comes to someone who basically just lets their ego get out of control when the video game does go their way. They're like, this game is unfair. And they just start kind of screeching to themselves, you know, and going, going a bit nuts. So... I, I feel like things feel unfair, and I will often express that this seems so broken. This, oh, this, that's ridiculous. That's so good, and that's a very natural thing for a lot of top-level StarCraft players to play, say. But they'll very early. Oh, we actually got a probe. Nice. I think that was a scouting probe. But the the difference is if you can then realize right afterwards. Wait a second. I'm probably misunderstanding what's happening in the game. There's probably a lot of things I could have done better. I probably did a lot of things poorly. Someone who's been getting back on the ladder myself in a big way. I am feeling it right now, man. Because there are so many times I'm just like, this game feels so unfair. <gasps> Case in point. Oh, we got to set the rally point, mate. You got to set that rally point over here. You can't just be clicking it down there. Our units are going to keep popping out there. I mean, Warp Gate will be done soon. They do recall the Adept. It's not the end of the world, but that's one that can definitely be a bit triggering. Uh, on the Terran side, expansion is going up. There's a Starport as well. Reapers and Hellions. Ah, it's going to be a big old Reaper Hellion push. Now, these pushes are either the most amazing thing ever to start the game or absolutely flaccid and terrible. And it looks like we're going for, oh my lord, five Reapers and three Hellions. That is a massive commitment. If that doesn't do big damage, you're kind of screwed. Now, luckily, Furor is not actually making Stalkers right now, only two Adepts. Adepts will die very quickly to the Hellions. Even though they do extra damage to Hellion Reaper, they, they'll just get blasted down so quickly. But with Warpgate already finishing, if Furor immediately makes two Stalkers, two Stalkers, two Adepts, plus a Shield Battery, we'll be able to block this. And that could be a very bad start for the Terran who decides to start building Widow Mines. Made a Tech Lab, cancelled it, starts making Widow Mines. We're going to build a third gas and a bunker. What's that third gas for, mate? Are you playing mech? Are you going to go mech after this? Why are we getting three gas already? This looks to me like Fighter is planning maybe even an Armory Widow Mine drop after. This might just be one of those Terrans whose whole goal is to do super irritating harassment. Oh, tries to pull back the weak alien, doesn't quite get it. Oh, this is sick defense. Dude, look at that micro from Furor. Furor is shutting this down. Ah, if the probes pulled and fought there, they could have surrounded that. But instead, we're going to stack them. Oh my gosh, that was dangerous. At the end of the day, though, that was great. Three Reapers and alien killed for only two probe losses. Furor is way ahead after that. He's going to go four gate blink here. Chronoing a prism? Yeah. Oh my god, the four gate blink should just be a game winner. There should be almost no way to defend that. The Widow Mine drop could try to distract. The Reaper Hellion could wait until the army moves out and then run in for a counterattack as well. These are ways you could buy time. 
But with the second barracks, third barracks only just started, Raven just started, first tank just started. If this four gate blink hits correctly, it should be game over. Um, looking at the execution, this is probably Masters, right guys? This feels like a Masters game. Maybe low Masters? Both pretty high APM. They're spending their money pretty well. Oh, Hellion Reaper does come in. That's what I was talking about. Widowmind distracts in the main Hellion Reaper up there. Widowmind does finally go down, but oh my god, don't stack your probes. Don't stack your probes. No, this is the worst. All you needed... If you just left your probes where they were, you would have taken less damage. Oh my god. Oh, 18 workers go down. Oh, I mean, obviously it happens. The Widowmind makes you panic a little bit, but oh, Furor... Should it, if it's only one Widow Mine, guys, you can basically just pull your probes, deal with it with probes alone. If you want, send just one or two Stalkers up. But Furo made a big mistake, and now Furo is kind of all in blinking into a corner there. Trying to get across this map is on a massive timer. There's a tank and a bunker on the natural. More tanks building here. The main base is wide open, though. If you, if you go in here with these Stalkers, I mean, you can definitely win this game. If you can take out this next tank that pops out, the tank should be hiding in the back of the base. That's a terrible spot for the tank. Thinking about where to put it. Fighter can't make up their mind. Yeah, that's a much safer spot because you just need to survive. Fighter is like spending so long thinking about where this is going to go. This is hilarious. Stalkers. Oh, let's queue them up to blink inside the main. Nicely done. Oh, the Adepts are going to go in the natural. They're going to get killed by the tanks immediately. Stalkers do take out one of the upgrades there, denying, I think it was uh, combat shields. Reactor will go down. Should be going for the SCVs as well. And honestly, if you just get on that tank, this could be game over almost instantly. Probes are no longer rebuilding. Stalkers aren't warping in either. Furor goes for the blink in, but not on top of the tank. Finally focuses the tank, but oh, Fighter's going to kill every single Stalker that can't blink away. That Stalker, I guess, was one of the ones from now there. And we've lost so many Stalkers. That's a problem. Four more Stalkers finally coming in, but... Skewer, oh, he screwed up his blink micro. He keeps trying to shift blink. You don't need to shift blink when you're, you've got so much area. Shift blink is for when there's not a lot of space to blink up, up or down a ledge. But Fura seems to only know how to shift blink. There we go. That's Fura's first just normal blink up to the high ground. Fura's still got massive damage potential. Fura's still making three more stalkers. Fura can just win this game right now. If we can take out that tank, it's game over. Oh, wait. There's another tank still on the low ground. No, no, no. That was just that tank shot. Fura is getting massive damage done. The Raven's almost dead as well. It barely survives. These stalkers enough to one-shot these units. Three more stalkers are going to blink onto the high ground. Fura, though, is so panicked right now. They're like spamming their micro. They're not spending their money at all. If they were probing behind this, they could be miles ahead. But they're struggling to spend their money. They attack their own Stalker there. They do take out the tank and a Raven. It doesn't matter. I think Fury's got this in the bag. I think Fighter might be the one raging about OP Protoss. But dude, you did commit like a billion Reapers and Hellions and a Widow Mine drop across the map. You've got to have extra bunkers and, and safety precautions against this. Finally defends the main, but is now down five workers. Has a third command center up, which is insanely greedy. I can't believe they built that. Four more stalkers are making. We're making a few probes behind this, but only a few. Wait, wait, wait. Why are they building probes off two different control groups? Oh my god. Uh, Fuhrer's macro. I mean, they've got really nice micro with the stalkers for the most part, but definitely you can see it's a bit frantic. And now with stim finishing, blinking away is the play. Just get out of there. Blink away, blink away, blink away. You've got blink off cooldown, mate. There we go. Finally blinking away. Stim is going to be too much firepower. 17 marines in a tank. I think fighter stabilizes here with three command centers. Is probably ahead as well. Third Nexus finally starting. Fuhrer misplacing that by two spaces. I mean, Fuhrer could take a fourth base, hold the probe key down, and still get ahead in this game. But Fuhrer is super focused on winning right here, right now. Oh my god, attacks the depot rather than the tank with the first volley. Finally takes out that tank. We'll get another tank, which is nice. But it's going to take so much... <laughs> Loading stalkers in the prism! Oh my god! Fuhrer's micro is a mixture of fantastic and constant panicky mistakes. This is great. Fighter keeps leaving this bunker empty and not repairing it, which is crazy. That bunker is so important. Just put four Marines and a few SCVs on it and you can defend here. This is great, man. I fall apart when I'm playing, playing four gate blink as well. So as much as I'm making fun of these guys, I, I don't do that much better myself. I'm pretty bad at either executing the attack or the defense in this scenario. Oh, nice medevac snipe. That's worth losing a stalker. Going to pick off an SCV there as well. Maybe a few of these Marines. Oh, good micro. Furor fighting with furious Liberator is going to get a few probes in the main, though. I mean, Fury just... The, the, so the problem Fury has in this game, guys, is no understanding of how to take breaks from the micro. They're just like... It's like, you guys, we've all been in this game where your adrenaline just hits a thousand, your heart's slumping, you think you just need to be clicking your units all the time. Whereas if Fury takes like 30 seconds to reset their macro, 
You've had 800 minerals for a build a fourth nexus. This nexus is appallingly bad. But you can tell they're just kind of like going, click, I gotta click things. I need to click. I need to click. I need to click things. This is like the thing where I get to the end of a game like this, like Pure is playing, and I'm like out of breath. And I realize I haven't been breathing. I've been like, fuck, punched over my keyboard. And I'm like, this is the most stressful way to play StarCraft. You really, <laughs> if you just kind of go, cool, we did some damage, blink back with the stalkers, go macro for 20 seconds. Go back in, do some more micro. Okay, blink out. Go back and macro for 20. You can kind of split this micro macro focus, especially when you're in control of the aggression. But um, yeah, Furor is really struggling on that. You can see, look, they're building buildings, but not even queuing the probes back to mining. So they're just like going to a random gate count. They're attacking their own probe over here. Furor is like so frantically just doing random things. And this is where you get stuck in what I call redundant APM cycles. You can see they just put three workers on a gas that already had two workers on it. Like, makes no sense. So everything they're doing is, like, inefficient and useless. Like, they're just making mistakes upon mistakes upon mistakes. So it feels like you're doing a lot when you're playing like this, but all you're doing is screwing yourself over and handicapping yourself. And even here, you can see Fuhrer is just F2-ing their army around. They've finally built a fourth, but they've, they've clicked probes. They're not shift-clicking onto minerals. They're just clicking them next to minerals. Like... There's so many misclicks here. Their natural's not saturated. They're building a forge, but they already built a forge. Why are they building their forges in different locations? Now they have to remember to chrono boost to different areas. This base is just comedically hilarious. And you got to think about this. Take a step back. I'm saying they're doing this, they're doing this, they're doing this. There's no pressure on them. They've had minutes of the game where they've been in complete control, but they've never taken a deep breath and just gone, hey, maybe I should fucking reset my macro, get organized, hit some clean macro cycles. They've been on 109 out of 109 for a while now as well. These probes should just A move, shift click on the minerals, but they keep getting clicked just on the ground for some reason. Okay, finally they're told to mine from that fourth base, but look at this. There's no map vision at all. We didn't use the second forge. Blink and charge is done. We're on eight gateways. We're on four bases, but we just took so long to get set up. It took us minutes to do what could have been done in about 45 seconds of organized macro. And because of that, it's going to turn into a base trade. So it's going to be Zealot Stalker against a massive ball of Marines. 2-2 two -two starting behind this. But the uh, the bio tank is shoving in. I mean, Fighter does get jumped on first. So Furor might actually be able to win this. They just have to run some probes away for the base trade. There is a bunker and a few Marauders, but that shouldn't be enough. Oh, he's going to recall. He's clumping for a recall right now. He's not clumped enough to recall all of that, though. He is not clumped enough to recall all that. Furor still hasn't built a pylon in the last few minutes of this game. Still at only 125 supply. Oh, it's going to recall a lot. I don't think that's enough, though, because you, you don't have any upgrades. I mean, plus one armor is almost done. That's a massive ball of 1-1 one, one bio with tanks shelling you as well. Bio does stim. It's a little bit far forward, but there's just no zealots here. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's a nice win for Fighter. Fighter gets this one in the bag now. And uh, Furor, unfortunately, it was their, their panic and their over-eagerness. Undeserved wins? Un Unned deserved wins taste best. 12 SCV builds. You're trash garbage. What does 12 SCV builds mean? You think he rushed you off 12 SCVs? Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Lol, says the fighter. The fighter obviously uh, enjoying the salt a little bit. But that's so funny. Undeserved wins taste best. 12 SCVs wins. Stim Todd. I like that. I like that. That's good. You Stim Todd. Effing trash, says Shira. To be fair, I think we are at our most vulnerable when we spent the last five minutes doing some of the worst macro of all time. This base here, I think, is just... I mean, there's there's no mis... Sorry, I, sorry, I apologize. There's not a single mistake Furor made. Furor could have... Should have won this game. They played better. Their macro was better. It was cleaner. I, I mean, honestly, it's just because their opponents are stim -tod. That's it. All right, well, that one was kind of fun, man. Watching watching someone fall apart in real time while having complete control of the game. What? What? <laughs> if you're the Tim I know, you're a short for Joe. Used to be my friend. Okay, that's that's wild. Now, not so much for Joe. Bringing out two homophobic slurs in the first 30 seconds of this game. Claiming they used to know this player. Uh, Tim Tam from my clan, Pig's Pan, down here in the bottom right side. Clearly the player who submitted this replay. And Cucky Cheese. <laughs> Not Chucky e. Cheese. Cucky Cheese. <laughs> I don't know about short because I'm six foot tall. But good luck, have fun anyway.
says Tim Tam. Chuck E. Cheese says, good luck, have fun as well. Chuck E. Cheese is a fast food restaurant in the United States of America. I've never been there. I, I think it's like, do, do they, what do they do? I feel like, I feel like I've seen Moist Critical eat pizza from there on one of his silly tier lists on YouTube. That's, I, I have no idea what it is. Is it like a kid's restaurant? Do they have like activities there or something? I'm trying to think of like, because it's, 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 there's these things you hear because obviously American media is so pervasive. And I have no idea really what Chuck E. Cheese is other than it's some some kind of crappy fast food. Um, yeah. Anyways, let us know what the best uh, item is on the menu uh, in the comments. Let us know exactly <laughs> what I should get when I go to visit America the next time where I prioritize going to Chuck E. Cheese. And uh, I'll keep the In-N-Out lovers mad at me for, for saying that I was like, eh. I didn't really like it that much. In and out was okay. I think I really, I, I, I definitely, I can't believe it because I was in California the other week. I really should have gone and done in and out, in and out, in and out again. Because the first time I did it, I didn't like it that much. But I think I ordered it wrong. I think maybe I was like a little, I was a little hungover at the time. I was like, I don't know. I just remember thinking it was like it was okay. It wasn't the worst thing. Just uh, the hype was undeserved. On the other hand, for whatever reason, I really dug Five Guys the first time I had it, but. It's kind of understandable because Five Guys is like double the price. So you're like, eh, if you do a price comparison, is it really better? Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, Kaki Cheese going for the classic No Scout Marine Bunker uh, low ground wall off here. Uh, hasn't really been any, anything else. Sorry, I should I should be careful about hitting enter just so um, my lovely editor doesn't need to constantly go back and, and censor things. This was a command center very early in the game. Tim Tam's just chilling, making link speed, making a couple queens, not really pulling off gas. So it does look like this one's probably more of like a platinum league game, I would say. Previous one did look a, a little bit higher level there. It looked like Masters 3 players that were just having, at least on the Protoss side, aneurysms from self-induced stress. Does feel bad, single widow mine, luring you out of position, lose all your probes to the Hellion Reaper running in, and then you're like, yeah. That's the thing. Like, it all starts with how you react to the first thing. Like, if you could... Ex I reckon if the Protoss player in that last game could have just accepted... Okay, I messed up. Took a lot of damage. Let's go all in with Stalkers. They could have, like, had a third gas. Been warping in Stalkers more frequently. And just been like, I'm not probing at all. Completely all in on Stalkers. And we're just going to micro this calmly. Not take any time to look at home except to maybe build the occasional pylon. And they probably could have won it because they were trying to macro and they were just like clicking nexuses in random spots and panicking and they weren't really warping in stalkers non-stop they were very panicky with their stalker micro you could definitely see how they were kind of handicapping themselves um this is the worst wall off ever guys and the reason is it's not a wall off there's a giant opening here into an opening there and an opening here this is what we call the please walk into my base terran setup we're going to unload some marines to try and stop the overlord. Two star ports in the main, in the easiest to scout position. If you're going to go double star port, at least hide them up here behind the mineral line. Like, come on, man. This is the craziest thing to me. Like, the number of players who are, like, going for the cheesiest strats ever. And they're like, yeah, just going to do it in my opponent's face. And they're going to get bane busted. Look at this, guys. Is it baneling nest? Oh, maybe not, actually. This might just be, like, a, a weird fling bane build. We'll see. So there's a lair and a second and third gas on the way. A bane bust would be pretty good. Widow Mines building could, of course, stop that, potentially. Marines not getting back in the bunker down here. There we go. They are moving down now. More Zergens building. Tim Tam's got to fix that economy. I think Tim Tam's forgotten they have a third base. Oh, because if they saturate these gases, that's going to really put them under mineral saturation. No, maybe they are going for a Bane Bust. Tim Tam... Oh, Tim Tam's doing it. Okay, so Tim Tam's going for a Bane Bust. Cucky Cheese has put two Marines on hold position. Rather than just build a goddamn depot there, why would you put your bunker here? Oh my god. If they just had a full wall off, it would take five banelings to, to blow up the wall off. Now it's all on the Widow Mines to defend this push. Because you've got six Marines, two Widow Mines, you have nothing else. Yeah, you've got a Fusion Core, but it's going to be minutes until Battle Cruisers are on the field. So basically, <laughs> this is going to be decided by this. Scanning the main, seeing no lair there. Doesn't really see anything else though. Not the most useful scan. A few lings run in. Okay, oh my god, Tim Tam needs to run past with the Zerglings a bit. But they keep trying, they're trying to do single Zerglings, that ain't gonna work. Oh, there we go, that's good enough. Oh my god, GG. That's it, man. Oh, that Widow Mine killed all the Zerglings! All you need to do is wall off right now and you're fine. Nope, we're chasing the Zerglings into our main rather than, oh, if you ran an SCV over and built a depot or anything, that would have been fine. But now you're, now you're pretty much done for. The Battlecruisers have to win you the game, because you're gonna lose everything. These Lings are gonna tear through 
into the main. And honestly, even getting a battle cruiser out is going to be very difficult. Can you guys imagine building nothing but a few marines and two widow mines for defense and not walling your base off when your whole first barracks and depot placement is designed to get you a wall off? I'm always amazed. People's strategic choices in StarCraft. Uh, oh, starport goes down. Honestly, if the Lings just attack, they can kill all the SCVs and the Hellion. The Ling Micro is truly something special to behold in that it's... Attack move would have been better, I think. <laughs> I mean, they finally... Okay, we, we finally get the Hellion. This Battlecruise is going to get out. There's two spores. Oh, there's plenty of spores. It's fine. You can just keep rallying Lings in. It's just surprising that so many SCVs are still alive, you know? But without a wall off, the, SC the Lings are just going to keep coming. Oh! N-word much. Wow. Starts with Fajot, goes for the N-word. Cucky Cheese actually has a very fitting name. This person might be the most self-aware. Because this is like the most cuck insults I've ever seen. Oh, they're going to blink into two spores. Two spores and two queens. Oh my god. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, you can see the spores and the queens just doing that at the battle cruiser. They're like, hello. <laughs> oh, this is what I love about Starcraft Letter. There are so many people who... Rather than fix the most basic part of their build, you know, the gaping abyss in your friggin' wall off, like, why is the bunker there? Put a depot there, you absolute nincompoop. If they had a wall off, this is an easy hold. It's so easy to hold. <laughs> oh. I gotta appreciate it. I gotta appreciate it. Thank you, Cucky Cheese, for being an absolute nincompoop. Well, gang, I think we've saved the best for last because in the top right, we've got Bitter Angry. I have a feeling they're the one who's gonna be raging. They're not even building an SCV right now. They're not at their computer. Oh my god. Oh, they've queued the game, gone to get a drink from the fridge, and then they get back 16 seconds in, they're already one and a half SCVs down. In the bottom left, we've got Harry Mary, the Protoss player, taking a nice lead here by building workers at the start of the game. One of the most technical things you could do in StarCraft. The Terran is still at almost no APM. Queuing two SCVs and building a depot a casual 20 seconds late. Oh. It depot into gas. It's a, it's a double gas. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's impressive to me, man, that those people out there playing competitive ladders of games who their build orders effing toss, they effing buff the race so BS. Mate, you're not building workers or a barracks right now. You've got more important priorities. Oh. I mean, it's, it's always the guys with 22 APM. And I've told the story so many times of every time I've played a team game. It's been years. Last one was Valorant when it came out. I played a ton. Before that, it was like Dota 2 for a little while. And just being in the bottom leagues and, and just seeing the absolute delusion of the people who hang out there is so fun. Oh, someone had too much sodium in their diet, says Harry Mary. But too much salt overflowing. Bit of angry, still not building workers. Literally by saying that, Harry Mary is destroying Bitter Angry's economy. Your mum always complains that my rum isn't salty enough. Uh, wow, that's impressive. That's it's kind of funny, actually. Because <laughs> it's so basic. I don't know. I just, I wouldn't expect someone to just do that. Like, you know, it's just, it, it's almost like, it's, it's not right. It's not quite the, the N-word, the homophobic slur that we just see every game. You shouldn't let her put her mouth there, says Harry Mary. She has a piece. Ah! So the great thing is Harry Mary is kind is keeping up pro production, building the second gas of the core of the pylon. So Harry Mary is doing a really good job of multitasking, baiting their opponent and macroing. Meanwhile, pretty much every time Bitter Angry speaks, they're cutting, they're skipping SCVs. They forgot to make an orbital. It's okay, I gave them to her, says Bitter Angry. We've got a second barracks coming down and a third barracks. And for some reason, the buildings are placed all around. Now, you might be wondering, why would you place your buildings around? The reason is because Bitter Angry with their 34 APM, they're going to have to scroll around, click each building, and then build things out of them. And they're going to forget to use the add-ons or anything like that. Oh, your tiny penis pre-ejaculator she talked about. You're the tiny penis pre-ejaculator she talked about. Okay, this is bizarre. I mean, there's, there's, there's baiting your opponent, and then there's getting real weird. Harry Mary's going to the weird territory. She told me about your dad. <laughs> oh, my God. I like that Harry Mary has chosen the dark path of trying to extract as much weirdness from their opponent as possible. It sucks. She is concerned you take after him. 
Wow. Bitter angry bringing out the deep insult. Still not building in orbital or SCVs, by the way. Already a seven worker lead just by, by getting your opponent to insult. Oh, she never told me anything about him. I didn't think she knew who he was. She saw you in the shower. Dot, dot. Wait, wait, wait. She's concerned you take after him because she saw you in the shower. So Bitter Angry is basically saying you have a... What was the, the name of the guy the other week? Uh, Big Ducks only. So Bitter Angry is saying that basically when Harry Mary was in the shower bathing his pet duck, um, that Harry Mary's mom saw him and is worried that he has a small duck, just like his father. Um, and and that's, that worries her. And that was some of their pillow talk, apparently. So that's... Bitter Angry is going to be the cool stepdad. Making an orbital here three and a half minutes into the game while making a starport. So this is the, the three barracks factory starport build where you build one of every unit, guys. Oh, wait, sorry, two cyclones. So we've got two cyclones, a marauder, a marine. And now we're going to try and wall off with a depot. Pro blocks it. Let's see if Bitter Angry starts building that depot again. They do. So this is the most demented one base build against a Protoss player who's building Immortals, Stalkers, and a Shield Battery, which means they are basically unkillable from a one base all in. So Harry Mary's kind of, you know, hitting their basics. They can put guys on gas. Uh, depending on what they want to do next, they can go Twilight Council or Robo Bay, get an Observer or two out after the Immortal just to get some vision to see exactly what's happening. And we've got uh, two Marauders and a Banshee building. Um, there's also an SCV who's uh, just hiding behind that starport. He's like, shh. Shh. He says he's, he's got a joint. He's smoking it behind the starport. Much like the high school gym. Everyone would always smoke back behind there. I remember there was this um, there's cool bush in my primary school. You know, there's like weird like big bushes and you could climb like inside it. And there was like a little hollow inside. But we kept finding bongs and needles inside there. So uh, so they they from 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 teenagers, those those miscreants who would uh, hop in there on the weekend. I think I doubt there was needles. I think they just said that to scare us. And then they chopped it down. And that was like the funnest bush to play in and, and, and hide in from the teachers or whoever. And I just, I don't know why. Seeing that SCV hide behind there, it made me think of it, made me nostalgic and reminded me of how sad I was when they chopped it down to try and remove the uh, the favorite smoke, smoke bush from the local school. Banshee, we were in like third grade or something. Year three, as we call it in Australia. Look at me speaking Americans, appealing to my audience. <laughs> I'm a cultural, cultural chameleon. What can I say? Chameleon? Like, like Charmander, because I spit fire. I don't know what I'm talking about, guys. This game's kind of slowed down from here. Um, it does feel like Harry Mary doesn't have a good scaling with their army, because it's just Stalker Immortal. Like, they do need to get, like, Charge or Blink or Colossus. Yeah, and then they're doing those things. Charge starts up, Forge is on the way. Harry Mary's got double the economy. The thing is, Harry Mary is F2-ing their army back and forth. And with the Observer following it, sorry, so not F2-ing, but using that, they really should have Observers on the other side. Now that they see there's Banshees, they need to basically build either cannons in each base or leave Observers everywhere, but they've already got an Observer in the main. And they're going to build a Stargate. Best way to counter Banshees, get a Phoenix or two with a, an Observer or an Oracle, or you just hunt them down because they can't escape. It's actually really smart. Bitter Angry has no follow-up at all. They're building three command centers, and they're just making dumb upgrades. Concussive, Hurricane Thrusters, Hyperflight Rotors. They have no economy to speak of. So essentially, we're looking at a player who's committing really hard to a lot of army on one base, but doing nothing with it till past seven minutes. This could best be described as rampant incompetency. By the way, guys, is that... Are you kissing the tree branch? Kind of looked like that tree branch was clipping into the Manchee a little bit. It is what it is. It's cool Protoss ancient temple over there on the left side as well. Well, that's a battery and a cannon. But look at this. Banshee's only going to get a couple probes before the Stalkers are there. Oh, we don't have Cloak or Speed yet. Oh, one Banshee goes down. 49 probes to 25. Blinks on the way. Plus one. Still no splash damage in the army, which if the Terran was building up just a big one base Stimball would be very scary for Protoss. But getting a Phoenix to make sure the air units are shut down. Harry Mary with some smart moves there. Not only baiting their opponent, but also countering their army. And remember, guys, never prioritize shit talk over macro. That's something Kat said many years ago when playing Combat X or Deezer, one of those one of those rats boys. Um, and, it, you know, truer words have never been stated. You, you, if you're going to shit talk your opponent, do it after you spend your money. That's, that's the general rule. It's something we've seen in the Salt Mines a lot, haven't we? We saw it in the first game today with that Protoss player who just kept microing. And uh, I guess they weren't shit talking, but still. Spend your money, then do other things in general. Probably a good way to get good at StarCraft. Now we're making Stim, while still making next to no bio units. 
two factories, three starports, three barracks, guys. So we're, we're in bronze or silver league kind of level of making random things with absolutely no direction. The big problem, I think, with players who get stuck in those lower leagues is they're too afraid to fail. So they, they kind of do a bit of everything without committing. So they're not really failing at any one of their strategic decisions. And maybe that makes them feel like they're doing okay. But the reason they're not failing is because they didn't make any decisions. And that's... I don't know if that's any better, you know? Is it just me? I feel like that's not good. The Banshee goes down. Bitter Angry's done, like, nothing this game. This army is garbage. These Cyclones are not good mid-game units, man. Why are we making Cyclones and tanks? But also infantry. It's one or the other. They've got separate upgrade systems. They're separate upgrade tracks, my friends. Don't make both. Oh, man. There's going to be some incoherent range rage from Bitter Angry this game. They're going to be like, this game's so bullshit. I can't believe they're buffing Protoss. We're going to go one engineering bay, one armory. He's like, I know there's separate upgrade tracks, pig. I'm going to make both at once with your unlimited 32 SCVs of money, right? Oh, no. It's double armory and a single eBay. Okay. And three starports. Two with reactors for... God knows. And two engineering bays. How is this player going to upgrade? Guys, because there's no way this player has the control groups to do it. They're going to go around their base and just click on things. We've got to, we've got to watch from their camera and understand. So they select their command centers here. They're dropping mules on their um, third. Research. They're not building SCVs. They're making an orbital. They're still... Okay, they're, they're rallying and they built two SCVs. Impressive. They're now putting workers on gas. Okay, I'm kind of impressed. SCVs that built buildings are actually going back to mining, which means they were shift clicked. I am amazed that Bitter Angry knows how shift works. This is actually impressive. There's a third factory for God knows why. Base is under attack. Those combat shields for those cyclones are going to help out. We're under attack over here on the left side of the map. We're going to attack move into it. You know what? It's a pretty crappy Protoss army. We might be able to defend if we lift that base and get it out of there. But oh, the base could get clicked on at any moment. Oh, oh, Harry Mary's on move command. Harry Mary's on move command. Oh my God, Harry Mary moving in. And it just has, oh no, the Immortal's there. Storm is finally done, by the way. Storm finally going to go down. That that could get clicked on at any moment. He's going to lift it now. The Archon Stalker, I think, can still finish it off if they attack it. There's only 200 hit points and it's burning. No, we're going to let it go. We're going to let it go. We're going to blink one Stalker to the right side. I love this level of Starcraft. It's my favorite. Command Center does finally get picked off by a single Stalker Micro. There's four bases for Harry Mary against Bitter Angry, who's just running around with their uh, just confused build order between their legs. They're going to build a Raven, three Cyclones, and two Medivacs. Ooh. So, so here's the thing, right? Whenever I play a new RTS, I think you can learn a lot from watching experienced RTS players play a new RTS. They do a lot of like massing one or two units because all they're focused on is the economy, right? They want to figure out their economy, kind of get a feel for how quickly they can expand how much minerals versus gas they need or whatever the resource system. And they kind of do that while making a big basic army. Then they get a feel for how those units operate, what upgrades they can get for those units. And then they slowly level up their experience. On the other hand, inexperienced RTS players build one of everything and wonder why nothing works. So they click every upgrade. They don't build economy. They expand at a really slow race. And then when they start losing, they follow up with the runt face for Joe. Harry Mary just drops the LOL. Runt face for Joe. I love it. I love it. I love you too, says Harry Mary with a love heart. That's what your mom says when she talks about you. I like to imagine that he's talking about Harry Mary, even though he said runt, runt face for Joe. She really hates you living in the basement. She calls you a runt face for Joe. I don't know. I feel like the um, I, I love you hearts is probably more what Harry Mary's mom says. That's almost awesome, says Harry Mary. So I think Harry Mary's interpreting the same way we're kind of pretending to interpret it as, even though I think Bitter Angry has just taken a while to type that out. We've got a big attack coming in. Warp Prism Zealot in the main. Big army there. Moving down that ramp in a side storm, making it work out. Bitter Angry just leaves the game. Ah, uh, I love that correlation. Incompetence in StarCraft and incoherent rage. There is more than a correlation. There is a direct link between these two factors. Disagree with me as much as you want, but I, 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 I'm going out there and saying it. No, to be fair, there is an argument against that, and that is somewhere around Diamond 2 on the EU ladder might be the ragiest place you've ever been, actually. There's a point where players are getting quite good at the game, but not that good. They're, 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 maybe there is like a middle point where you're not actually incompetent, where you, you kind of think you're good, but you're not really good compared to like actually really good players, but you're good compared to new players. 
maybe that might be the sweet spot. There's that and people at the very bottom. I think there's like, there's probably a spot in gold and plat where people are super chill. But I reckon there's a spot in like bronze, silver and a spot in diamond too that are like the peaks of rage. You guys let me know if you agree or not. Thanks so much for watching the Salt Mines. And thank you, uh, Harry Mary, for being a runt face for show. Thanks for watching everyone. See you in the next episode. Goodbye and good night. GG, well played.